This is drugs. This is lazy game reviews on drugs. Any questions? A-Train is one of those Maxis titles that has always flown under the radar. Way under the radar. It didn't sell well at all, but I remember seeing it in all those Maxis catalogs that came with the other games from them. A-Train came out in 1992, right as other Maxis games like Sim Ant and Sim City were reaching new heights in popularity. Maxis started to expand the company's line, and one way of doing this was licensing and publishing games from outside developers. A-Train is a Japanese game developed by Art Dink. It's actually the third game in the series, with the Japanese version known as Take the A-Train 3. But since it was the first to get much reception in America, they just called it A-Train to make it more aggravating. It was released on PC, Macintosh, and Amiga formats, but despite their best efforts, the game never caught on and is one of Maxis's first failures in retail. I've had the game in my collection for quite a while, and recently I finally took up the initiative to learn how to play it. I decided on the DOS version of the game, since that's what I would have played at the time it came out. I took one look at the manual and... Good grief, this looks boring. Balance sheets, building guidelines, construction materials, downtown reorganization, expenditures, subsidiaries, specialized income, real estate, reconstruction, personnel, fees, taxes. This sounds more like some economics class, not a game. There is no in-game tutorial, but you get a very nicely written tutorial in the manual. This is one of those games where the manual is an absolute necessity. Trust me, I tried to figure out the game without it and about put my head through a trash compactor as a result. After about 30 to 45 minutes of messing around with the tutorial and game mechanics, I finally got the hang of it. Here's my take on the game's focus. A-Train is a local economy simulator based around the idea of running a citywide mass transit system in order to boost businesses and population in the near vicinity of train stations. Eh, in simpler terms, it's not so much like Railroad Tycoon as it is SimCity. You're not building a transcontinental railroad or learning the history of trains, you're helping to build a city by heading up your own transportation business. When starting the game, you begin with a single train station and a central railway, which runs directly through your city and connects neighboring cities. Trains will come through at certain times of day to deliver two of three important commodities in the game, people and supplies. It works kind of like this. The point of the game is to make money, and you get money by getting people to use your trains and services. But you'll need supplies or construction materials in order to build those services. These materials are the lifeblood of the city. They allow you to build things and allow your city to build itself. So the first order of business is to get these supplies. The trains that come into your town will leave you materials at your main station, but you can't just treat them like resources in a strategy game hidden in some imaginary vault somewhere. The materials are only available for use in the area around where they physically sit. So you'll need to make ways for the materials to be transported from one spot to another to grow your city. And this is where the trains come in. You build a railway and then build a station. Then of course you'll need to buy and schedule a freight train to transport these materials to areas that need development materials but can't yet reach them. You will also need to make sure the people can get these materials so you'll need a passenger line to transport them as well. Once you get a nice system of transporting people and materials to a new area, the area will start to get interesting to the population, but they'll still need places to live and work. You'll then need to play the real estate market in order to make land available for building, since undeveloped lands aren't yet owned by anybody. Once you buy the real estate around your stations, the value will go up, and then you can sell it to the people, who will then start building using the materials that you provided. You can spur this development by building all sorts of buildings like apartments, factories, office buildings, golf courses, and even theme parks and baseball stadiums. And the more people you have, the more money you'll make, so as long as you keep your ever-growing rail system in check, everything will be fine. 
You can upgrade the stations, upgrade the trains, buy and sell real estate to make things work how you need them to in order to assure progress. There are also plenty of little tweaks in the game and advisors which will give you ideas of what is going on and what may be in demand. Like in SimCity, you can also take out bonds with the bank in case you need cash, but you can also play the stock market, which is an extremely interesting addition to me. Say you're building a lot of offices, then management firms will start to rise in stock price, so you can play off of that. But remember, these services are only open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. That's because the entire game takes place one day at a time. That's why at the default setting, you'll keep seeing things go from light to dark, going through a day cycle. A clock ticks down constantly, which will determine what you can do and when. You can turn the day cycle off, thankfully, because it can get annoying real quick. You also have seasons which come and go, which is a welcome occasional change to the already good-looking isometric graphics. In fact, Maxis thought the look was so awesome, it went on to use A-Train as the inspiration for the look of SimCity 2000. You know, a lot of the game actually reminds me of SimCity 2000. Now, of course, there's the obvious, it looks like SimCity 2000, especially on the Macintosh version, which even has the same interface. But more of the feel of the game reminds me of SimCity. Once you get past the steep learning curve, the game is incredibly fun, and it's just as addicting as any other Sim game. No matter how many times it happened, I still found myself enjoying the fact that a new train station starts to bring a new area to life. Eventually you get bustling metropolises, and the feeling of fulfillment is really quite exceptional. There are plenty of little things that could be better, especially in the DOS version, like the lack of decent sound effects, some annoying repetitive music, and the sometimes confusing menus. For instance, why is the cash display hidden unless you bring up a menu? If you're not careful, you'll run out of money and get a game over screen without even knowing what happened. The Mac version fixes this, so obviously they knew it was a problem. But an even bigger problem is sometimes you'll have a train station set up and need to make a change to the line, but somehow somebody will build an apartment or something in the way before you can get to it, and then the whole system becomes useless because there's no bulldozer tool. So you're screwed, because you can't get rid of this building in the way of the line and you have a broken city. Now you could fix this if you got the optional A-Train construction set. Some versions of the game came with this included, it's really the same thing as the SimCity 2000 Urban Renewal Kit's place and print function. You can edit anything on the map, including those annoying buildings in the way, and then continue your game in peace. It's not necessary, but it can save you a lot of headaches. There's also some bugs, in my version at least, where sometimes the save game just doesn't save, and you'll quit the game and you'll come back to a half-empty city, and that's kind of annoying. So always make sure that you save your game twice, just in case. And when it comes down to it, A-Train is a great game in my opinion, even with some of these bugs. It's very well made, has plenty of options for you to experiment with, it looks great, and the gameplay is honestly nothing short of addicting. I would still recommend the Macintosh version if you're really wanting to play the game, but the DOS or Amiga games are just as fun if you just get used to their quirks. If you're looking for a good city building sim with a unique twist, why not give A-Train a look?